right, so today's lecture is dealing with muscle strength and muscle endurance endurance and training for these two characteristics of fitness. Now, what we need to start with is a brief discussion on muscle physiology. So what you're looking at here is a cross-section at different levels of a skeletal muscle. So if we take a whole skeletal muscle, such as the bicep, and we cross-sec through the plane, you can see that there's these bundles of all these little um, all these little elements in there. The bundle is called a fascicle, and the little elements are actually the muscle cell, also called a muscle fiber. Within the muscle cell, there's these proteins that are organized into what's called a myofibril, and this component here, the sarcomere, is what actually shortens in order to make the muscle go through its contraction. So from an anatomical and a physiological perspective, skeletal muscle consists of many muscle fibers. And these are also called cells. So it's the muscle fiber that is the muscle cell of, uh, uh, or is the cell of the muscle, rather. And they are connected in bundles. Connected in bundles. If we go down one more layer of detail, we have all of our muscle fibers or our muscle cells being comprised of myofibrils. And these fibrils, myofibrils, are comprised of proteins that interact in order to shorten the whole muscle. Now, when we undergo strength training, we have an increase in the number of myofibrils. In other words, we add additional proteins to increase myofibril number, which results in an increase in the size of the muscle fibers or the muscle cells themselves. This process of adding additional myofibrils increasing the size of the muscle fibers is called hypertrophy. So hypertrophy is the way in which a muscle gains size or gets larger by increasing the protein, the myofibrils, leading to an increase in muscle fiber size. So we're not actually adding additional muscle cells, we're just increasing the size of those that already exist. Now on the converse, inactivity will actually reverse the process. So this is no longer hypertrophy, but the opposite, which is atrophy. So we have hypertrophy, which is the increase in size of a muscle fiber, of a muscle cell and atrophy, which is the decrease in size. So why don't we take a real quick look here at the muscle cell, the muscle fibers. And as you're probably aware, there are different types of muscle fibers. And we're going to categorize the types of muscle fibers into two different types, slow twitch and fast twitch. A slow twitch muscle fiber is a muscle fiber or a muscle cell that resists fatigue. So in other words, it is fatigue resistant. Now, even though they are fatigue resistant, they actually have a reduction in their force, uh, force or contractile abilities. So force production or contractile abilities. So they don't contract very rapidly or with a significant amount of force. Not that they can't contract sufficiently and forcefully enough, but they just don't have as much contractile strength and force as a gas switch fiber. Now, going back to a previous lecture, 
the slow twitch fiber is going to rely primarily on oxidative energy systems. In other words, these types of fibers will require oxygen, a constant supply of oxygen that's sufficiently supplied to that cell. The fast twitch muscle cells or muscle fibers have the ability to produce a large and rapid contraction. So they contract rapidly and with a significant a significantly larger amount of force compared to the slow twitch. The trade-off here is that these cell types are more prone to fatigue. So they fatigue more quickly than slow twitch fibers. As an energy perspective, the fast twitch fiber is going to rely more on our non oxidative energy systems and will not require a high level of oxygen supply. Now, when we look at a muscle, the muscles are all controlled by the nervous system. And so there's going to be a nerve that supplies electrical uh, information, information to create contraction to a group of muscle cells. So one nerve cell innervating and interacting with a group of muscle cells. And that's called a motor unit. So the motor unit is the nerve that's connected to a group of muscle fibers or muscle cells. Now, there are going to be many, many motor units within a given muscle. So let's take the biceps, brachii, the muscle in the arm, for example. You're going to have thousands of motor units, individual nerves, connected to multiple cells within the biceps. So thousands of those, thousands of those motor units. And in order to change the strength of contraction to differentiate between lifting a heavy weight and feeding yourself with a fork, high amount of force for the first one, low amount of force for the second one, we're going to recruit a different number of motor units. So our motor units are recruited to produce different amounts of force. Now each of these motor units, when it is recruited, it follows a principle called the all or none principle. So the all or none principle. And this principle states that if a motor unit is activated to contract, it's going to contract with the maximum amount of strength that each of those individual muscle cells are able to create. So what are going to be the effects of strength training? So what are the effects that strength training will have on an individual? What are some of the benefits of strength training? Well, one, we can have an increase in muscle mass and overall muscle size. of those changes that happen at the muscle fiber level. You're also going to have a higher utilization, better coordination, of individual motor units. So you might think of this as increasing your dexterity and your motor control. We'll see an increase in strength, 
of attached items such as your tendons, the ligaments, and the bones themselves. With weight training or uh, with strength training, we're going to have an increase in storage capabilities for fuel. So storage of fuel in the muscle and also blood supply to the muscle. You're also going to have improvements in blood, fat levels, so lipid levels in the blood and other biochemical processes. In fact, increasing muscle strength can lead towards vast improvements in metabolism, other biochemical processes that can also assist beneficially with weight loss. So those are some of the effects. What are the benefits of these effects? And I'm sure you've already been able to identify a few of the benefits. Obviously with the changes that occur, you're going to have improved performance of physical activity. will have improvements in injury prevention. Improved body composition and appearance. Strength training is also associated with enhanced self-image. This is just the idea of your own perception. Also leads towards better quality of life. As you age, you'll have improved muscle and bone health. gain in your prevention and management abilities against chronic disease. So all very beneficial. So just like we've already discussed with cardiorespiratory endurance type training, how do we tap into the benefits and the effects of strength training. And we always want to start with assessment. So you want to assess your overall strength and your overall muscle endurance. Got a couple different tests that can be utilized for taking a look at strength and endurance. For strength, you can measure a repetition maximum, or a so-called one rep max, one RM. This is the maximum resistance or weight that can be lifted just a single time, just once. And this will help out with a measurement or assessment of, of, of muscle strength. So you would do this for a bunch of different uh, a bunch of different muscle groups. So maybe uh, you do a one, mat, one rep max for bench press to measure pectoralis major uh, uh, strength. And you do a uh, uh, bicep curl or a preacher curl to measure biceps or a hip sled to measure quadriceps. So you do this for a variety of 
different muscle groups and figure out what's the maximum load or resistance that can be lifted just a single time. For endurance, The approach is to just simply look at the maximum number of repetitions that can be achieved uh, for a given workout at a given uh, load. So maybe you go into the uh, into the fitness facility and you stack 100 pounds on the bench press bar and you lift that as many times as you can and you can get it maybe eight times. And then you go and begin to uh, pursue a muscle strength, muscle endurance training program. And periodically, every couple of months, you measure on that same weight and look at and see if you have, have had increases in the number of repetitions that can be performed. So strength test and uh, an endurance test to assess both of those variables. So after you've assessed your strength and your endurance, you can begin to develop a muscle strength and endurance program or plan. So we've already done something very similar with cardiorespiratory endurance and what you'll remember is we developed that program we apply the fifth principle and we're going to do the same here. So we're going to take a look at the frequency, intensity, time, and type for muscle strength and muscle endurance. And we'll start out with our frequency. So it is recommended by the American College of Sports Medicine, ACSM, One should utilize two to three days per week per muscle. So two to three days per week, and then follow that workout with one full day, 24 hours of rest. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you do everything in those two to three days. It just simply means that you're going to use two to three days per week for muscle. So maybe on Monday, you perform upper body workouts, pectoralis major, you know, bench press, bicep curls, lat pull downs, etc. And then on the next day, as you're resting the upper body, on Tuesday, you perform lower body workout and you work on uh, the, the muscles of the legs and maybe uh, of the abdomen. And then on Wednesday, you come back, and now you're on to your second of your two to three days per week for muscle group for um, the upper body. And you can alternate upper body, lower body, just like that for uh, five to six days per week, but only hitting individual muscles two to three days with a full day of rest in between. So very beneficial to divide your workouts into upper and lower body. You do upper body on one day, follow that by lower body as your upper body rests. Okay, so intensity. For strength and endurance training, intensity is synonymous with resistance. So we're going to look at the resistance or how close or far you're going to be from your one rep max. If you are interested in building strength, your intensity should be heavier weights. So higher resistance, closer to 80% of the one rep max. And you're going to couple this with performance of a lower number of repetitions. So that's to build strength. You could also focus on building just endurance. So 
just work on improving endurance. Here you're going to apply lighter weight, so lighter or lower resistance, typically between 40 and 60 percent of the one rep max, and you'll couple that lower resistance to a higher form, a higher number of reps. A third option is to balance strength and endurance and have more of a general fitness program. So for that general fitness program, we're actually going to lift more of a moderate resistance. So lift moderate weights closer to about 70% of your one rep max. And then a moderate number of repetitions. All right, so that's going to be intensity. How about time? How do we measure, I'm sorry, time rather, not time. How do we measure time in terms of muscle strength and muscle endurance. And it really comes down to reps and sets. So a rep or a repetition is an individual movement. So reps are going to be the number of individual movements. So number of times that you lift a weight through a full range of motion for that particular muscle that you're lifting to. You should always do, regardless of strength training or endurance training or more of that general fitness approach, you should always do enough reps to fatigue. You do enough reps to fatigue. So what does that mean in terms of the weight that we are already discussing. So heavier weight, more of the strength training type uh, exercises. It's going to be a lower number of reps, one to five reps to achieve the T. Again, this is the program to build strength. Lighter workloads or lighter resistance, lighter weight is going to be a much higher number of reps. So between 15 and 20 repetitions to reach fatigue. And this would be the program, the, the program to build endurance. general approach, which will help you to build both strength and endurance. Now you're looking at 8 to 12 reps. So 8 to 12 reps until you achieve fatigue. So that's going to be repetition, your uh, individual movement. And these repetitions are going to be grouped into sets. set is a group of reps that's followed by a rest period. So these 8 to 12 reps group together into a single set. For that general fitness approach of building both strength and endurance, Typically, one set 
is satisfactory. So you do one set of each of a variety of different exercises. As you go up from there and increase more than a single set, this is going to increase strength development. Now it's important that you couple these sets to rest. So we always want to have a period of rest between individual sets, groups of repetitions. So you're going to measure your intensity with the number of repetitions and the number of sets. The last variable here is the type. So what types of activity should we be performing for endurance and strength develop. Again, for that general fitness approach, we're looking at between 8 and 10 different exercises. Typically, what we, what we do with these 8 to 10 different exercises, and again, you can divide this to the upper body on one day, the lower body on a second day. We want to start out and make sure that we hit all major muscle groups. So we want to start with exercises that involve larger numbers of muscles. We want to make sure that we want to make sure that we work both the, uh, the agonistic and the antagonistic muscles. And I'll give you an example of what that means here in just a second. So if you work your bicep brachii, which is the elbow flexor, that would be the agonist. You also want to work the elbow extender, which is your tricep, which would be the antagonistic. Muscles. So you basically want to work the muscles that do the opposite motion. Lastly, you also want to go from the large muscle groups, many muscles in the, in the group doing the activity, such as a bench press, which works the pectoralis major muscle group. It also works triceps and other stabilizers in the shoulder. So that's going to be a large muscle group involves multiple joints, elbow, the shoulder joint, in the case of bench press. And you want to work then from those large muscle groups, multiple joints, to smaller muscle groups over single joints. So after the bench press, that might be your first exercise, and then the second exercise might be something like a tricep exercise, such as a, a, a tricep press down or something like that. So now you're dealing with just a single joint, a single elbow joint there rather than both the elbow and the shoulder. And so maybe you'll also do some stuff with the deltoids after you've uh, done your, um, your bench press. If you get into multiple different exercises there, a major muscle group and then several smaller muscle groups. Now, just like we saw with cardiorespiratory endurance, we want to make sure that we warm up and we cool down. And the approach for warming up for exercise, you want to do a general warm up to begin with. And this occurs before the workout and is typically going to be something like 10 to 15 minutes or 5 to 10 minutes of jogging, light jogging on the treadmill, just to increase 
breathing rate increase, muscle efficiency increase, blood flow uh, and circulation. But then you also want to apply specific warm up. And the specific warm up is going to be very lightweight. high number of repetitions for each exercise. So again, back to the example of, of bench press, you start out 10 minutes on the treadmill and then you go over to the bench and you start out maybe with just the bar and you lift the bar 25, 30 or maybe more times. And that gets the blood flowing to that specific muscle group and then you begin to stack weight and you go through uh, your endurance training or strength training or your general fitness type training, reps and sets for bench press. And then you move on to something like a tricep press down. And you'll start out with very low weight on the tricep press down. It might be just a couple uh, couple plates, maybe maybe 20, uh, 10, you know, 10 to 20 pounds. You do your tricep press down and then you do your sets and reps of, of the higher weight and you proceed through the workout with a specific warm-up before each of the specific tasks that you are going to perform. Now at the end of the workout, you want to also cool down. And typically, you apply a general cool down. And you go back over to the treadmill and you, slow, you, you slowly jog or you, you walk on the treadmill. And this is going to help to do things like lower your heart rate decrease circulation into the muscles and help the body move back towards a resting state. All right, so that's all I got for muscle endurance and muscle strength training.